Let's start the show. People, are you ready? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the I Like Birds podcast. This is your host, Zach Rippey, and I'm super pumped right now. I say that a lot, but I really mean it, man. I'm so excited to be recording. Uh, it's been a while, man. It's actually 10 p.m. right now on a on a Thursday night, and I just got inspired, man, to, to get on here and just kind of give some updates on life. Uh, this is going to be a very personal episode. Uh, don't have any scriptures written down, all right? So don't come for my throat about that. Uh, nobody ever does. I'm just saying. You know, sometimes you just feel when you have a podcast about Jesus, you're like, man, I need some scriptures in here, and I should have them. I ain't going to lie. But I've been, you know, th- I've been living out the scriptures a little bit recently, and that's kind of what I want to come on here and talk about is that I'm starting to just really see... Uh, all that God has for me, and it's not just um, with ministry, and it's not just being a voice for Jesus, but a lot of what He has is just kind of just further growth in the in the Christian walk. And I'm seeing that transformation and sanctification is for sure a process, but it's one worth like it's one worth being excited about. It's one worth being like. I just want to throw all my chips on the table and go all in. And I heard this something powerful on a podcast today that talked about once we remove sin from our lives, we're able to enjoy the blessings that God has for us. And, I, and I've been living that out recently, and it's been feeling really good. And wow, I've just had so much more mental clarity and just been feeling uh, like I've got a pep in my step and like I'm making progress. And I'm going to share all that with you guys today. So please stick around to the end. I'm really excited about this one, guys, because I've been really committing in my heart. You guys have been seeing, (laughs) I'm very well aware you've all been seeing that I've been doing a lot of video recently with guests and I haven't been putting out as many solo episodes as I have in the past. And I'm really excited about that because this has brought a whole new audience to the show. It's opened up the the airways essentially to let people know that, yo, I Like Birds is doing big things and we got the beautiful studio. We have incredible guests and awesome clips and conversations. And I'm even putting the clips on the podcast app now just for those people that want short form content and want to just, you know, hear something, a little topic being discussed. Uh, last time we had Zach Vincent on. He's my brother-in-law. And we talked a lot about the country and just where we're at as a nation. And he's on his Christian walk right now as well. And he's on fire for just, you know, becoming a better man. So it's just really cool to sit across from him and just be on air and just let the world kind of see uh, the new member of our family that uh, as of February of last year. So hope you guys enjoyed that one. But this is a solo one, guys. And I'm trying to commit to one video and one audio uh, a month. I think you all remember back then for some of my day ones, the OG birds. <laughs> That we used to pump out like, you know, one to two episodes a week, you know, in the very early days of the walk. And uh, that's back when we were just like every night, every day in the word, just like figuring things out, you know, like getting through that New Testament. So excited, asking questions, coming up with answers. Yo, gotquestions.org was like my homepage. You know, that's uh, one of my favorite Bible reference uh, websites. And I was actually just there last night uh, because I had some questions. And uh, today I listened to a podcast that was involved with uh, the election uh, doctrine that is, you know, uh, talked about and stuff like that. So I'm just, I'm just, I'm still like, I'm still going, I'm still doing, I'm still doing the walk, I'm still learning, I'm still asking questions, I'm just, you know, I'm just growing and I'm shifting, you know, I'm just doing a lot of different things right now in life. And one of those things I really want to talk to you guys about is something that I've been pushing to the side for years and not prioritizing and not really caring about, and that's health. Yes, physical health and mental health, all right? I think I've really focused in on spiritual health since 2020. And I've maintained that and tried to always get back into the spiritual health arena, making sure I connect in with God, listening to worship, praying, talking about him, testifying, you know, trying to just make sure that I'm keeping Jesus like, you know, as much in my life as possible. Because without him, y'all know your boy flawed. Y'all know your boy don't say the right thing. Y'all know your boy got a temper. You know, like there, there's all these just little things that when I'm not walking correctly is very, uh, is very, very prevalent on me, you know. So I've been very intentional about that. Uh, but I had something happen recently, and I wrote about this in my book, 21 Days in Africa. If you haven't read it, please go purchase that on either my website or on Amazon. 
and it's 10 bucks on Amazon. Go get that. Come on. I love it still. Like it's still, I, I read through it almost, you know, I pick it up once a week and just kind of look through it, you know, and see like, hey, I did that. I wrote that. You know, it's my biggest accomplishment to date. So please pick it up if you haven't. I'll link it in the episode notes for anyone who has not grabbed that. But anyway, in there, I talk about a lot of things, <laughs> but I talk about uh, getting life insurance in one of the chapters. And I had kind of a moment where I got the test results back for my blood test and saw some things on there that weren't good uh, when it came to the related to the liver. Right. Keep in mind, I got that back in January of 2022. And right around that time, Catherine was dealing with uh, her pregnancy and it wasn't, you know, she was having not complications, but was having to do things in order to not have complications, you know, multiple doctor visits. Anyway, we're having some issues with her pregnancy that we're trying to resolve at that time. We're trying to move into our house. We're trying to have a baby. Like there was just so much going on that I kind of just let that be something that I didn't deal with in that moment. You know, I kind of had a little bit of a moment like, all right, I got to tighten up, you know, one of those things where you're like, all right, I got to do this, you know, and then, you know, you 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 make a, a small change for a short period of time, then you're right back on your old ways, right? And don't get me wrong, I did really tighten things up uh, when it came to drinking last year compared to the year before and the year before that and stuff like that. So I really slowed down on that. I started feeling conviction from the Lord uh, in regards to the amount of alcohol I would drink, and I was trying to be more um, letting me control it rather than it control me in certain instances and stuff like that. And I even came on here and made a couple episodes about uh, my experience with um, Olivia and Mikey when we went to Florida for uh, Armani's father's funeral. Shout out Paco, RIP. Uh, and, you know, just really seeing the just the sin that in, in, that's involved with alcohol and just the consequences that come from it. And as much as I... <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, and I said in the book, like, I love cracking open a cold one, you know what I mean, just kicking it with the homies, or just watching a game, or, you know, just relaxing with it, it's kind of like, it's a vibe, you know, and uh, I'm all for the vibes, so, um, but, you know, my liver results from that blood test were showing that I need to, like, you know, tighten that, tighten that up a lot, so, out of nowhere this year, it was probably about right when the new year hit, a little bit after that, I believe so. I think that's the time. I didn't really write it down. I probably should have, but I think it was around that time. I started to feel like this like weird feeling in my feet for some reason. And I was like, whoa. And and just recently, my wife was talking about like, yo, uh, your feet looking a little swollen right now. What's going on? I was like, I don't know. That's weird. You know, kind of wrote it off. Didn't really think anything of it. Then I started feeling tenderness in him. I call Olivier. He's a nurse practitioner. We started like, he starts to, you know, he's essentially web md and diagnosed me you know like but so anyway i'm freaking out a little bit because i remember even just like feeling some like pain under my um where my <laughs> I didn't, tell me how this is funny guys i didn't even know where my liver was you know i had a google image what where's your liver at you know what i mean so uh, i went ahead and did that and i saw where my liver was and i realized that i have a tender spot where my liver is and i rub it constantly right and i'm just kind of like putting my hand there to kind of soothe it so that kind of really got me worried and scared. So for the first time since high school, I decided to go visit a doctor and get another blood test and stuff like that. And he kind of, you know, gave me some some wisdom and a godly man and had Noah's Ark paintings on his wall. And you could tell he 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 this dude literally got up in the middle of our conversation and went to his whiteboard and drew out a biblical representation of why we shouldn't drink. And I was like, wow, man, this guy is, uh, he's straight up telling me like, yo, I suggest don't drink for the rest of your life. I'm a purist though. Like, I think it's a poison. It's a toxin, you know? And I'm like, dang, I got to give up the lick my entire life. Like what? So I'm over here just kind of like flabbergasted by it. And he's like, I want to run another test. Uh, the same test that you took last year. I want to see if there's any improvement or if it's gotten worse. So I'm like, all right, cool. He gives me like some minerals or minerals, um, some supplements to take that are like good for the liver. And he sends that off to, uh, he sends off my lab results off. To, and then two days later, I get it back and boom, my liver's not totally fine, but two out of the three tests that were spiked high were resolved. And I actually had like a healthy liver in when it came to those tests. So that was just kind of, you know, one of those things where it was like, all right, God, what are you trying to do to me? Like, did you heal me? Like I, I was praying for healing. That's why I say that. So it was Olivier. So um, did you heal me? Like what's going on? There was still one thing that looked a little high, but it wasn't anything that he was concerned about. I just started asking myself a question of like, do you care if you're healthy? Do you prioritize the, the need to be healthy? Like, do you want that to be something that 
you, you represent? Do you want your kids to uh, look at you and, and consider you take care of yourself? It was something that I never really dove too much into. You know, I was always just kind of like, man, if I want to turn it on, I could turn it on. I could drop weight like that. You know, like once an athlete, always an athlete, you know, being kind of cocky with it and uh, just not really prioritizing it. Right. And I realized, though, um, that I just started just really reflecting on the health aspect of life recently. And uh, I wrote a blog recently and it's called I'm Thankful. I'm Peachy King. Uh, It says, I'm thankful. This has been the first year of my life where it doesn't feel like I'm chasing something. I no longer feel like my days are attached to a restless longing inside of me. And by the grace of God, I received a glimpse of something that I've been seeking my entire life. Stability. All right, stick with me, guys. It gets good. It's not something that that remains every day. There's still a fire inside of me and a passion burning for further greatness. But my mind feels free. My environment feels healthy. And my thoughts are no longer held captive by I will be happy when this happens scenarios that I used to constantly daydream about. I'm thankful. I'm peachy king. And it's ironic. When you start to feel stability, you start to feel ish. You buried for years rise up to the surface. Excuse my French, but stuff didn't hold that word weight for you to relate. Nevertheless, I'm thankful this stability has led me to deal with the past issues that I've buried deep down while I was trying to survive another day in order to obtain this long sought feeling of peace and stability. I'm thankful for the journey. I'm thankful for all the souls who supported me and I'm thankful for all that God has done to get me here. Dealing with the dirt isn't what I'd call desirable. Open up, opening up wounds is painfully needed for true healing. Turning that joy for the Lord into an everyday smile takes work. But because I am thankful, that's the reason I am willing. All right, so essentially this blog, when I talk about digging up dirt, opening up wounds, I was kind of letting you guys know in a in a subtle way that I was going to start um, going to therapy, talk therapy. Uh, something that my wife and I have talked a lot about. It's something that I felt that I could use in my life to deal with stuff and to just get better and to just improve and just to grow and just, you know, think about things and be more consciously aware of stuff. So not only did I have a physical, you know, health, I don't want to say like scare, but kind of thing to make you, you know, question things and reflect on things. Uh, And not going to lie, I was a little scared, you know, in that moment of like the feet pain and the, the liver abdomen feeling a little weird on the to touch and stuff like that but also just mentally man it's it's this this life isn't easy you know and everybody has trauma i believe that and what i've really taken away from this is that people have needs human beings we have needs and if those needs aren't met a lot of times we respond to situations in a poor manner a lot of times we don't know how to deal with emotions because our needs aren't being met or we lash out because we have a need and we don't know how to communicate that you know so I've just really been enjoying the sessions. I think I'm about five or six weeks in, and I've just felt not only have I done that, but I've also done, um, I cut out soda, cut out alcohol, uh, been prioritizing getting my steps in and walking more, being more active, because I'm a very stationary uh, person throughout the week because I write for a living, so I'm at a desk a lot. So prioritizing like, hey, get up, you know, after every meal, you know, walk for five minutes, uh, run around the house with your kids walk your kids to sleep when you hold them, like, you know, move around, work out, you know, uh, so I've been going to the gym two times a week, and you may be thinking two times a week, that's it, but the best thing that I've been learning about fitness recently is just having uh, real, not realistic goals, I don't want to say realistic, but like goals that you can keep even on your bad weeks, even on your crappy days, you know, so I've just really been shifting the way I've been doing, you know, health and fitness before, because there's been so many times in the past where I'm like, oh, I'm about to get right, and I, you know, I just, I do it for a little while and then I just fall off, you know? So I think that's because a lot of times I'll overshoot it and I'll overestimate like how I'll go so hard in the beginning. And then I'll just like, if I don't match that same level of hard I went in the beginning, then I feel like I'm slacking or that I fell off and I just completely stop, you know? So I'm trying to re relearn the way I do things in order to have better results this, uh, this time going forward. And it's really important to me because I'm just starting to see the fruit of not only, you know, mentally, uh, having clarity, but also physically, I feel a lot better. And I don't know if you remember, but I would do solo episodes and I would, I would have shortness of breath. And that was like a, something that was very concerning and I still have it a little bit, but what I'm trying to do now is just make sure that I'm getting in cardio and just, uh, you know, working out, uh, as far as, uh, strength training goes as well. And I don't know, I don't need to go into it too much. But what I'm trying to say here is that, 
you know, I'm really prioritizing health. You know, I, I did spiritual health for a couple of years and now I'm doing physical and mental health and just really trying to just grow. And, and this show is about growth. Like, let's grow in our faith together. But it's also about, you know, becoming more like Christ in our character and in our walk. And I'm pretty sure he walked everywhere for a reason, too. You know, he was trying to burn those calories too, get those steps in. Right. He was checking his Fitbit. He, he didn't say it, but I, be- <laughs> I believe he did. So, yeah, man. And I started also reflecting on like, man, have I been using food and drinks as like a coping mechanism for those, you know, the pain or the wounds or the trauma that I may feel like I have or um, or may just have without even feeling like I have. And I'm not saying anything on here to incriminate myself or anybody else that I have trauma. But I'm just saying that I think everybody has some things that they need to work through and they need to overcome and they need to have a better understanding of, especially for me when it comes to like emotions and having compassion for emotions and dealing with other people people's emotions and dealing with my own emotions you know it's like i am not that is not my top strength (laughs) so if i can learn how to do that i'll be a better father and a better husband and a better friend and a better son and a better person to be able to uh minister the gospel because you know a lot of times people have wounds from the church or wounds from life that they need help with and if i can you know enhance my compassion enhance my uh chances of of connecting with them through emotion and being more understanding i I think that's only going to be helpful in in my mission of being a soul winner and i've also been you know kind of really thinking about like wow was alcohol and food and like um eating unhealthy and pleasure of that nature uh was that something that would uh, be a stress reliever for me all right so what are some other things i can do for stress relief your boy just played hoops on Monday night. Now let's get into the nitty gritty of your boy dropping buckets for the first time in a minute. All right. So if you don't know me very well, um, back in high school, I used to play basketball. I, used to, I was on varsity, captain, played all games my senior year, uh, won an award, coaches award, you know, just have to look a little stunt real quick. Um, I had like four points a game. <laughs> Four points a game, 10 rebounds, 10 assists, you know. I was like uh, the Draymond Green of the Bloomingdale Bulls. Anyway, so I haven't been playing in a while. Uh, I used to play LA Fitness once in a while and, you know, all that jazz, but uh, canceled LA Fitness when COVID happened. So I haven't really played in a very long time. I even coached, you know, Mansfield Legacy team last year and got to shoot around a little bit and really enjoyed that and play with the guys a little bit. Uh, But nothing like full court pickup, you know what I mean? So went out there with my buddy Turner on Monday night and your boy got buckets. All right. I'm just going to I can I just draw people that listen are numbers, guys. Right. You guys like numbers. All right. So just going to say this. All right. Five three pointers, three wins in a row for my squad, two of the game winning buckets, a Kobe level pop up jumper, pull up jumper couple steals, couple blocks, and I had a blast. <laughs> All right. I had so much fun. It was just so, so exhilarating just to be out there and playing and communicating on the court, shaking hands with dudes. Like, man, it just felt so good. And I forgot how much I missed it. And it's funny because Catherine has been dancing. Uh, that's one of her, that's what she was known for as um, a teen and all the way into college and, and even beyond that. Right dance professionally, traveled abroad and everything. And so she just started picking up dancing again. And then I'm like, man, I got to get involved in a sport. Like I've been playing football with Noah in the yard and we just been like running routes and catching deep balls. And like, I just been having fun with him. And I'm like, man, I want to play sports again. Like he's got me in the sports again, you know? So I, you know, found a way to, you know, reach out to Turner. Next thing you know, we're doing the open gym. We're going to do a softball league and then we're doing a basketball league in the summer. So I'm just reconnecting with some things that I love and just really figuring out. It's almost like, you know, when when you have stability, you're able to like kind of tap into the things that you love the most again. You know, I don't have to like my business is going really well. My wife is doing really well. My my uh, my kids are doing really well. So it's just kind of, and that's a blessing to the Lord. Let me just say that real quick. Praise God. Amen. So when when you detach all that, like I just felt for years, and this is kind of alluding to the blog post, I just felt for years I was just grinding and trying to get to this moment of like, wow, like let me, let's get in our house. Like, let me figure out what I'm doing for like my career, Lord. Like, what is it? Come on. Uh, and and he, he blessed, man. He blessed the writing business like so much, y'all, to the point where, uh, I just feel so like established. I feel successful, and 
Uh, I'll share more of that with you in just a minute, but just reconnecting with the love, man, of of the things that I enjoy is, is something that I'm even like, even this podcast tonight, like I felt inspired and I'm like, man, my, my wife isn't gone, didn't leave the house, but I'm still going to record. Like I'm still going to uh, make the effort to do so and just come have fun with you guys and just share like what's been on my heart over this last season and what I've been up to, man. It's been been kind of MIA when it comes to being personal and vulnerable. And I'm trying to have a better relationship and uh, comfortability with being vulnerable so that it can help you and it can connect with you and it can also like make me a better, you know, communicator in that regard. So hopefully you're finding value in this episode. It isn't as funny as some of the ones in the past, but that's okay. We still had some jokes in there, right, guys? Because I was hooping, baby. I was like D-Wade before, you know, his son turned into a girl. You know, like I was hooping, baby. <laughs> oh, D-Wade, why are you going to do me like that? I'm just going to say I haven't got to communicate this on the pod yet. But D-Wade, you and Gabriel Union, a poor child. It's funny if people don't know basketball, they have no idea what I'm talking about, but look it up. All right, let's see. Uh, yeah, business, man. Let's talk about the business real quick, y'all. Let's talk about the business real quick, shall we? All right, so it's so interesting how, you know, somebody's words can have so much impact on you. Dustin Watts, you guys may have remembered him from a podcast. He was on, uh, he was our first guest in the live studio that we were doing um, called Financial Peace is Found in Jesus. He's my boy. You may have seen him in the 21 Days in Africa book as well. He said to me, uh, as soon as I told him I was interested in pursuing ministry, one of the first things he said was be bivocational. And I didn't really know what that meant. (laughs) I was like, I don't really like, I'm not really by anything, (laughs) Dustin. (laughs) And he's like, no, dude, bivocational, meaning like don't just rely on ministry to be your source of income. And I was like, oh, OK, yeah, I, I get that. All right. All right. So I got to be a waiter and a, and a pastor. All right. Bet. And uh, and I, I wasn't even thinking that, wow, God can com- can completely open up a whole different door of like what your career is and still use you to glorify him through that. And that's what's what the writing has turned into, y'all. I've just been really, you know, loving connecting with people and helping people with speeches and scripts. And uh, I've done bio for my boy, Zach Vath, in uh, Tampa, Florida for real, real estate. So check him out if you haven't. Uh, if you need a realtor, let me know. Uh, I'll put you in touch. And just just so many different things, y'all, to the point where it's like, I don't want to be on here all day and making a big list of all the things I've just done in the writing world, but I've just done done it successfully. I hit 300 five-star reviews on Fiverr recently, been top rated on there for a while now, and I'm starting to just really branch out. Uh, I'll share this really cool story with you guys that really just inspired me and just really just, you know, one of those things where you just, it's like a little trophy, you know, like, hey, like, this is cool, man. You know, you just get all excited about it. So I had this one client I wrote a, a Father of the Bride speech for, and it went so well that all the bridesmaids came up to him and said, out of all our friends that got married, you had the best speech. And it absolutely crushed at his house. He threw the, he had the wedding at his house, uh, which means it was a Probably a big house, right? <laughs> and uh, he actually ended up framing the speech and gifting it to his daughter this past Christmas. Tell me how three weeks later he hits me up. Actually, his assistant hit me up <laughs> talking about uh, Bob wants to jump on a call with you to talk about a speech that he wants to make uh, at his company. And I'm like, well, all right, cool. Let's do it. Jump on a Zoom. And this dude is over here asking me to write him a speech that he's going to present to roll out a new system that they're implementing uh, for 125 associates that are on staff and the, the company is, is, uh, an investment company. They've been in business for over 50 years and they have over $45 billion in assets. Isn't that bananas? Anyway, asked me to write the speech, uh, was generous with compensation and, you know, assured me that more work is coming in the future and just really likes working with me. And like, it was just so nice to like, ha- like how you could think something that's a short term, like, oh, just a speech, just a one off, you know, like they'll never have it again, have anything like this again, could turn into something where they're going to give you that trust and that 
um, that rebooking and that like, hey, I need your help with this. Like, help me with the words for this, too. Like, just to think that like that can happen, you know, based on just like, you know, God opening doors, you know, and he's also a Christian man as well. So it was just really cool, man. And I'm just really starting to see the fruit of like the, the time and energy and effort put into my business, you know, just the night. I, like, I don't think you guys understand. I would be writing <laughs> speeches and scripts so late at night when I was living in the RV and uh, just, you know, for a cheap price and just trying to just get my name out there. And uh, man, to just get to this point, man, it just feels so good, y'all. And I'm just so grateful for it. Um, so I'm going to be actually, I, I kept, you know, dropping nuggets and hints and I'm going to be launching, uh, I like words. Oh, I, I just gave you all the, the name real quick. So that's a little tidbit in my business. I'm launching that, uh, in a more open space this year. I've been kind of quiet or about it over the last two years. Cause I didn't know which direction I was going to go long-term if I was just going to, you know, get a pastor job or, you know, maybe I was going to write the book and it was going to explode and I was going to get a book contract, you know, uh, or if I was going to stay on the freelance writing path. And God has just really opened my eyes to all that can come from the freelance writing path and just, you know, being my own boss and helping other people, uh, you know, become freelancers and become their own boss and just turning their passions into paychecks is just something I'm a big believer in because I've done it with everything in life so far. And I think that's a really cool little tidbit about me. Uh, I did hip hop music and I found a way to make money doing that. Did stand up comedy, comedy, found a way to make money doing that. And uh, what's this one now? Uh, ministry. I'm still, I, you know, we got the shirts and we got the book sales, you know, so found a way to make money with that. And then uh, this one, uh, writing, I uh, found a way to make money with that. And that's a passion of mine. And being able to turn passion into paychecks is just something I, I just think is a game changer for people when it opens up, you know, ideas that you want to partake in and it, it connects you with people that you want to connect with. And it's just a really cool thing, man. So uh, we painted my office black on this called an accent wall, which I learned that. And we got a little sign up. We got a little plant in the corner with a little stool. Shout out Rob Ross who gave me the stool. And it just looks, it looks dope. It looks awesome. And I have uh, the new camera. I'm going to be filming some stuff and I'm going to be recording uh, content. And I might even launch a podcast. I might even launch another podcast called I Like Words. Uh, I think I'm going to do it, y'all, because I just, this is, you know, a passion of mine as well. So I might as well incorporate it for my business and uh, connect with people that are also in the same realm of business and entrepreneurship and being self employed and freelancing and branding and just. I don't know, man. I just I'm fascinated with this stuff. I've learned so much. I've I've been studying the game for a long time now of how to increase your your everything, really, like how to make your your gig stand out with different images, how to uh, create a, a look that is presentable, how to be professional, how to communicate over uh, via chat, how to how to snag more clients, how to make videos that you know, are captivating for, for clients to see, you know, like there's just so much things that I've learned throughout it, how to get five-star reviews. Like there's just so many layers of it that I've just been learning and soaking in knowledge, uh, how to hire VAs, which are virtual assistants, how to get other freelancers working under you. Like there's just so many layers to the game that I want to put people on that I've just been learning myself. And I finally feel qualified enough. I've actually been feeling qualified enough to teach for like the last year. Uh, but I've really been stacking up, uh, my ideas Stacking up content, I got over thirty scripts already written. Short, short form, short, 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 uh, short form scripts for like reels and TikToks. Uh, I got episodes already written. I got ideas in the bag. So I just got a lot going on right now when it comes to that idea. So that's why I'm committing to one audio, one video for birds because I'm really going to launch words and try to have that be uh, something that is a new kind of branch of my brand and just bring people into that and hopefully make it funny and make it personal, kind of share my story because I haven't really shared much because I try to keep it very like my Christian walk on here, even though I've been dropping gems and stuff like that for a while now with you guys, but really just opening that up because I will say this guys, there is a lot of people out there who as soon as they see Christian podcasts, won't even tune in. They see, oh Jesus, they won't even, they won't even click. You know what I mean? So Sometimes you can't expect them to come to you. Sometimes you got to go where they're at and point people to the source of of why you're doing what you're doing and how you're able to do what you do. Because I always am going to be saying that God is the CEO of my business. God is the reason that this is happening. God is using writing the gift that he gave me to help other people 
on some of the biggest days of their lives, a speech at a graduation, a speech at a wedding, a a script to create something that's going to help somebody else, self-improvement scripts, um, man, just so many different things, a bio that's going to connect somebody with somebody else that they can shake hands with and and me and, and like do life with. Like, it's just so cool the, the power of what this business has done and, and the doors that's already open in just two short years, y'all. So once I start putting my face out there, once I start posting that content, I'm really excited to see the fruit that's going to come from it. I think it's going to be big. I really do. I think we're just going to like I don't know, man. I just think we're going to tap into a whole new market of people and demographic and people that are just curious for knowledge. It's like, yo, I want to become a freelancer too. I hate serving. <laughs> you know, like I hate being a host. Like, bro, I hate driving to work. Like I want to drive to a coffee shop and do my work there. Man, I have all these great ideas, man. I know how to do this. Come on, man. And that's the thing. You know, you start doing something with your little bit of experience. You know, I started with, um, <laughs> see, this is what you're going to probably hear on the pod if you if you guys tune in. So please tune in when you guys see me drop it. That'd be awesome to get, you know, some you guys to listen and see if you just enjoy the content you know you don't even have to be a freelancer or uh somebody that loves business you can just tune into you know hear good content anyway uh i had little not little experience writing but i was you know i use my experience of podcasting i use my experience of i gave a wedding speech once and it crushed (laughs) i use my experience of i did stand up comedian i can write jokes for your wedding speech you know so taking these things and using them as a way to uh, potentially start a business. And I think that's utilizing your experience is one of the greatest things that you can do because it separates you from other people. It, it puts you in an elite class to let you say, hey, I charge this amount of money for this. I will do this service for you based on my experience and my time put into it before you and during you. You know, So it's a beautiful thing. So I'm really pumped about it if you can't tell. So please support that when it drops. It would mean the world to me because And I don't know when exactly I'm dropping it because I'm trying to stack up as much content as possible before I release it. That way we have enough to go if we start popping off and people are like, yo, we want more. We want more. You don't want to give them more. (laughs) Uh, So I promise it's coming, though, this year, 2023, uh, doing a lot of awesome things. So, yeah, man, we've come so far. We've come so far in this journey. Uh, We're about two and a half years now of podcasting for I Like Birds, man. And it's just been incredible over 140 episodes posted on on the podcast at maybe even 150 now because a bunch of them I did without numbers which um, were more so just kind of like I didn't write this one down so take it you know me under a tree or something like that but man there's so many of them and I'm just so proud to say that we have a back catalog that people can go to and turn to when they find the show and that's very exciting and if you're still here listening man you're a real one I have to tell you that because I keep hearing all this, you know, my boy Mikey, bro, like, I'll send him a Marco Polo that's like five minutes, and the Marco Polo is just kind of like a video chat app, and he's over here like, bro, that was so long, like, make them shorter, and I'm like, bro, you can't watch five minutes of a video, like, <laughs> come on, B, <laughs> but I get it, I'm the same way too, we're all the same way, we're all just, want, we want everything quick nowadays, but I'm gonna, uh, I, I think that there's a there's a hunger still for like the longer form content where you're like, man, I really just felt like I connected with Zach so deeply right there because he just shared so many things about his life and it was vulnerable. It was honest. And I feel like I know him better and and I really appreciate that. And now I'm going to listen to something else he's done because Hey, I respect the journey he's on. So that's kind of how it happens. And this one take Drake, I've been doing this straight through, you know, you got to give that props. Like who can look at a wall and talk for 35 minutes? Your boy. Also, man, I got this great opportunity coming up in February. And, you know, it's so funny. You know, um, my my dad called and he asked me like, hey, man, like, so what's your plan? Are you going to be a pastor or uh, like what's, you know, and not any way of like in any negative way at all. Just asked me kind of like what's going on with that, you know, and I essentially told him the bivocational thing and, you know, God's still using me and just wrote the book and, you know, that's touching people. I got the podcast still. I got my website doing blogs, you know, putting on for Jesus when I go out in the streets. And, you know, if a, if an opportunity opens up, it's going to be, you know, uh, it's going to be a decision I have to make with my family. And I don't hundred percent know if Catherine's ready to be pastor's wife, you know, so got to have that conversation and stuff like that too. And like I said earlier, I'm still literally turning from sin daily with my habits and with my uh, trying to, you know, be renewed and restored and, you know, reborn and sanctified still, <laughs> it's a process y'all. So uh, maybe, you know, when, when the Lord's time is for that, the Lord's time is for that. But as of right now, I'm still getting opportunities to share the gospel 
And one of those examples is at uh, Man Night on uh, February 6th, the day after the Super Bowl. I'm going to be speaking at my church in front of about, I think, 75 to 100 grown men that uh, come to hear a word, have a meal, and fellowship together. And I'm excited to kind of share a little bit of my story as well as just encourage people to understand that the power of their voice is just uh, so important right now for Jesus because of the spiritual war that we're living in and uh, just the, the way the testimony connects people to him. And, you know, we we as Christians, <laughs> I'm not going to give the message here, but I'm just very passionate about this. We as Christians, like there should be no, and I encourage you, if you, I want you to pray about this because this is something that's like really on my heart. And I don't think it's just for man's night. I think it's for everybody that, you know, follows Zach Rippy and I Like Birds. But we as Christians, we have to make sure that the world knows which team we're on. The world has to know that we rock with Jesus. I read this verse today, Luke 12, 8. Luke 12, 8. Let's pull it up. And I say to you, this is Jesus speaking. And I say to you, anyone who acknowledges me before others, the son of man will also acknowledge him before the angels of God. But whoever denies me before others will be de- denied before the angels of God. Okay. Jesus himself is telling us like, yo, we need to be putting on for him. It shouldn't be a secret that you love Jesus and that you follow him and that you trust him. It shouldn't be a secret. And when when he says this right here, when he says, but whoever denies me before others will be denied before the angels of God. As soon as I read that, I didn't think of somebody that's saying, oh, no, 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 no. I don't believe in Jesus. I thought of somebody who like, believes but then acts like they don't or like blends in with the world or like doesn't put on for him when like a blessing comes through and like doesn't give him any credit or glory like what you just you know married your wife and you're not like you know thank god for sending me this woman you know you're, you don't want to include a bible verse in your vows or your script in or in your speech you know you just got blessed with a new job you don't want to thank thank god you know like so many little things like that where that is denying that's denying where the where the blessing comes from you know and like i don't know man it kind of just it doesn't sit right with me that there's so many people that consider themselves christians and i don't ever see it i don't see the fruit i don't see nobody putting on for jesus like i don't see nobody dropping stories about you know your faith I don't want to say nobody, but you know what I mean. Like, there's there's more people that do, that deny than people that put on, and I don't understand that. Still, I'm two and a half years in the game, and I'm like, man, maybe he's gonna change. Maybe I'm gonna see it more. And when I do see it, I post about it because I'm like, yo, way to put on for Jesus. This girl from Texas, I just shared her her story um, on my I like birds uh story on Instagram. Let me find her name. So if you guys want to go look her up, you can because her stuff was incredible. She's local too. Uh, Kelly Lees. K E L L I E L E I S. I definitely said her last name wrong. But 3,000 followers on Instagram. And is over here talking about 2022 broke me and rebuilt me. And she's talking all about how Jesus has, what Jesus has done in her life. Another one that's pinned, people need Jesus. Talking about her testifying at work and this woman coming to salvation through her, her through her story talks about God restoring her her love for fitness and and health and just getting healthy again and God answering prayers when uh, her siblings were having babies and and all that stuff and health issues like she'd be putting on and I love that I'm gonna share that because it's especially our my generation and lower so I'm 29 dang I'm about to be 30 this year uh, 29 and lower. Seeing seeing people that are in my age graphic, age graphic, age demographic, you know, not putting on and like just straight up will share things about politics and share things about sports, but like you don't never see them share things about God. And if they do, they don't want to say the name Jesus though. They want to act like all gods are created equal. I don't know, man. I'm about to go down a rabbit hole if I keep going. <laughs> so let me just pull back a little bit. But anyway. That verse really just spoke to me and uh, is definitely going to be in my man's night sermon because and I got a whole bunch of verses from Acts that really spoke out to me in regards to that. So, yeah, man, I'm excited, man. Life is good. I'm really enjoying this new health kick that I'm on. Uh, I don't think it's short lived because I just the way I feel the mental clarity 
has been a game changer. I feel lighter on my feet. I'm actually even being intentional about sleeping earlier and getting in bed earlier. I'm reading more. Like I'm just making a lot of like day-to-day changes and habits that I feel like are going to really just set me up for success. And at the end of the day, it boils down to your own personal habits. We are in control of our own life when it comes to our decision makings and our disciplines and the things that we do with our time. So I, I, I implore you to maybe consider doing the same. Uh, it's and I'm not seeing results on the scale right away necessarily the way I want to, which is a bummer. I'm not going to lie. Your boy dropped like f- maybe four pounds so far of this journey. Uh, but it's still pretty good. You know, three weeks in, four pounds, not bad, you know. But I'm excited not just for the, the weight loss. I'm excited for everything else that comes with it. I'm excited for not being a slave to the food and a slave to the drink and a slave to pleasure. You know, I'm excited to just be restored and renewed and just have mental clarity of like, I'm not thinking about that anymore. I'm not resorting to that as a stress reliever. I'm turning to God in my moments of weakness and I'm denying the temptation. And there's, there's strength in that. There's, there's, there's gall to that. You feel good. You feel like you're just a warrior king and you just want to conquer the land and you want to slay the dragons, and grab your wife and kiss her on the cheek. If you catch my drift. All right, y'all. Hopefully you enjoyed the episode. Much love to y'all. Please subscribe if you haven't. Please buy my book if you haven't. Please read my book if you haven't. Drop a review if you haven't. And uh, put it on for Jesus if you haven't, will you? All right. Love you guys.